हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू आल्फा टेक सीरीज नंबर थर्टीन माई नेम इज अमर नैन रवि कुमार फ्रॉम आल्फा बयोलॉजिकल्स इन दिस प्रजेंटेशन आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन यू अबाउट सिम्बायोटिक्स आर द अप्लीकेशन ऑफ फर्मेंटेड राइस ब्राउन एफ आर बी इन शिम्प फॉर्मिंग एंड इट्स एडवांटेजेस डॉक्टर आयल मेचनिक was the first to describe the positive role played by the bacteria he is popularly known as the father of probiotic but as far as shrimp farming is concerned much work has been done by david moriarty of queensland university australia the term probiotics comes from greek pro and bios meaning pro life non pathogenic microorganisms which when ingested exert a positive influence on host health or physiology probiotic effects are very strain specific a single single strain may exhibit different benefits in aquaculture we have water probiotics soil probiotics and different uh, and gut probiotics all these are having different strains prebiotic a non digestible feed ingredients that promotes the growth of beneficial organisms is known as prebiotic fructose oligosaccharide glucose oligosaccharide mannan oligosaccharide xylulose oligosaccharide and glucon are the commercially available prebiotics these prebiotics are manufactured in india by tata chemicals and now at present we are using rice bran as a prebiotic symbiotic probiotics when used together with prebiotics are termed symbiotics and are able to improve viability of the probiotics so rice bran rice bran as a prebiotic it is a by product from rice milling industry obtained while milling and polishing brown rice into white rice it contains 90% of the nutrients and it is its cost is low it has 12 to 18% fat 12 to 13% protein and it's a good source of antioxidants b complex vitamins vitamin e vitamins and minerals like vitamin c the antioxidants present in the rice bran reduce the stress to the shrimp by preventing oxidative damage caused by free radicals the negative points are high fiber which is very difficult to digest and phytic acid it is known as an anti nutritional factor it kills the minerals like iron zinc and calcium so may lead to zinc deficiency iron and calcium may not be deficient but it may lead to zinc deficiency fermented rice bran has been used as a fertilizer in agriculture in japan when fermented it proliferates a good bacteria and fertilizes soil it is said that that products grown in the soil with fermented rice bran are delicious it is a traditional japanese method it works as a fertilizer even in shrimp ponds fermented rice bran is also used in piggery poultry and fish farming now we are using it in shrimp farming as a prebiotic rice bran provides substrate soluble nutrients energy to probiotic bacteria to multiply it's a good carbon source for heterotrophic bacteria and yeast it acts as a direct food for zooplankton and shrimp when decomposed or mineralized rice bran releases nutrients for the development of phytoplankton we have to sieve the rice bran only we cannot use it directly we have to sieve it so you can see the rice bran raw rice bran on the left and the sieved rice bran on the right a raw rice bran settles to the bottom 
but fine rice bran suspends in the water. Some farmers are using flour mill to pulverize the rice bran. At least we have to pass the rice bran through a mesh and remove the broken rice and husk. This is the microscopic picture of raw rice bran. You can notice the high size disparity. And this is the sieved rice bran with the small size particles which are easy to be fermented. Coming to the process of fermentation, for each kg of rice bran, we have to use 2 to 10 liters of fresh water. Higher the water, better the results. And we must use fresh water, never use pond water and saline water. Better to add salt if the TDS of the water, total dissolved solids of the water is less than 1000. In the lab we use normal saline that is 0.85% otherwise the bacteria cannot survive. During fermentation pH comes down, subsequently alkalinity comes down. So we have to add a buffering agent like calcium carbonate or sodium bicarbonate. The dosage is depending on the initial alkalinity and quantity of the rice bran. Then add probiotics, enzymes and ferment it for 24 hours. Discard the fermentation media if molds appear on the surface as it produces toxins. Also discard if, it, if the foul smell appears. You can apply fermented FRB in one or two doses depending upon the quantity of the product and DO level. So he is sieving the after sieving the rice bran, he is adding probiotic, then adding buffer, and he is mixing it. So he has three drums. So every day one drum comes to the application. So after adding water, he will switch on the aeration. And he'll, he'll leave it, he'll, he'll ferment it for 24 hours. Right. Coming to the probiotic strains, we have done an experiment in the lab with seven strains of bacteria and two strains of yeast and one control. Control means that is without probiotic. Some strains are able to ferment the rice bran and multiply. This is the fermented rice bran without sieving. In this case, it is better, so better to sieve and apply only milk or extract to the pond. Otherwise, it may pollute the pond bottom. This is a microscopic picture of fermented rice bran. You can see the mineralization taking place on the surface and releasing micro particles to the water. This is the microscopic picture after 24 hours of fermentation. You can notice the cellulose left over. One gram of rice bran contains 1,80,000 particles. So 10 kg contains around 1.8 billion particles. Each particle contains an army of beneficial bacteria producing enzymes, amino acids and soluble nutrients, can control Vibrio and stabilize water quality. After fermentation, the crude protein increases, fiber reduces and phytic acid reduces. This is the high magnification of rice bran fermented with bacillus. You can clearly see the bacillus bacteria and this is the high magnification of rice bran fermented with 
two coca species and this is the control means without any probiotic you can clearly notice some long motile decomposing bacteria these are not desirable as these bacteria cannot colonize in the shrimp gut and exert probiotic effect and this is the rice bran fermented with bacillus species you can observe that bacillus inhibited the long decomposing bacterial species you can see thousands of bacteria on the surface of fermented rice bran can see thousands of bacteria right so this is the rice bran fermented with two strains of cocci probiotic this also inhibited the decomposing bacteria that naturally developed in the control as mentioned earlier ph and alkalinity comes down in this process so ph below 4.5 means alkalinity is zero so we have to add buffer 1.6 ppm of sodium bicarbonate increases the alkalinity by 1 ppm and this is for after 48 hours of fermentation you can notice very less bacteria visible because at low ph not all strains of probiotics are viable you can notice some cellulose particles left over if we add cellulase enzyme or cellulomonas bacteria that produce cellulose enzyme can be added to the formula for better fermentation two strains of two species of yeast are commonly used for fermentation but uh, uh, saccharomyces boulardii has a probiotic activity it break down directly it breaks down the dietary phytates fortifies the rice bran with folic acid and boulardii can utilize rice bran as a sole carbon source hence better fermentation dosage during water culture i mean during pumping we can use 100 to 200 kg per acre or more even or even more based on the sediment quality along with very high dose of probiotics during culture 1 to 2 ppm or even more based on the turbidity application of fermented rice bran adds some turbidity to the water turbidity it reduces the sunlight availability to the plankton because of less plankton ph fluctuations will be less so less stress to the shrimp so shrimp will be very healthy if you collect plankton after application of fermented rice bran first two days you can notice only suspended frb this is not plankton this is only suspended frb after 3 to 4 days zooplankton develops this is a zooplankton col collected 4 days after frp application you can also notice some aquatic insects i think that is anisops right this is a zooplankton collected from the same pond and this is very good food for the shrimp seed the leftover rice bran works as a fertilizer in the pond and supports phytoplankton development desmids cnidesmes are the very common phytoplankton species in most of the frb applied ponds this is a microscopic picture of biofloc and frb the morphology is same so shrimps can directly consume this so shrimps can directly consume frb phytoplankton or zooplankton developed through frb millions of probiotic bacteria can enter the shrimp gut 
Even the zooplankton that develops by consuming FRP is enriched with probiotic. So finally, high quality and quantity of probiotic bacteria enter the shrimp gut and pond, creates a probiotic dominated environment. Total ammonia nitrogen will be relatively less because of the carbon content of FRB. The cell wall of yeast that is used in fermentation has beta glucans and the probiotic bacterial cell wall contains peptidoglycan. Both beta glucan and peptidoglycan are well known immunostimulants. Probiotic stabilizes the water quality because of natural food and stable water quality. Shrimp will be healthy and grows well. So use symbiotics in your form with the help of a consultant and get good benefits out of it. Hope this presentation is useful to you. Thank you very much. You can follow us on our Facebook page, Amarani Ravi Kumar, or Alpha Biologicals, or Aquaculture Professionals. And this is my WhatsApp number. 9848663776 thank you once again see you in the next series of alpha tech